the force on a wire in a magnetic field and producing a magnetic field. So, our goals for today. First, we'll learn about the force a magnetic field exerts on a current carrying wire, and then we'll discuss how magnetic fields are generated. So, the force on a current carrying wire. Well, magnetic force exerts, I'm sorry, magnetic field exerts a force on a single moving charge, so it's not surprising to us that it exerts a force on a current carrying wire. Well, a current is a whole set of moving charges. So we'll go back to our force on a single charge equation, F is QVB sine theta. If we remember that the charge Q is the current times the time, this becomes F is IVTB sine theta. But if you multiply a velocity by a time, then you get a length. So you can replace VT by a length, and you get ILB sine theta. And the length in question here is the length of the wire through which the current is uh, flowing. The direction of the force is again given by the right hand rule and your fingers point in the direction of the current. In this case, current's defined to be the direction of flow of positive charges, so your right hand always gives the correct direction. So it's basically the same right hand rule we used for the QVB sine theta equation in that case, you point your fingers in the direction of the velocity, and your palm is the direction of the field, or you curl your fingers in the direction of the field. Same thing works here. Fingers the direction of the current. Your palm is the field, or you curl your fingers in the field direction, and your thumb is the force. Same rule, but you never have to worry about getting the direction wrong with a negative charge, because current is defined to be the flow of positive charge. Okay. So, now often, we imagine that the wire is very long or even infinitely long, so in that case we calculate the force per unit length on the wire. So instead of F is ILB sine theta, we do force per unit length is IB sine theta. Okay, so works in a very similar way to the force on a single charge. Well, where do, where do magnetic fields come from in the first place? Well, if we think about electric fields, electric fields are produced by charges and magnetic fields are produced by moving charges. Now, in practice, we generally produce magnetic fields from currents. So, here's a picture of the magnetic field from a long straight wire. So, this is kind of analogous to the point charge. A long straight wire is analogous to the point charge for electric fields. So, in this case, we've got this red dot in the middle and the red dot in the middle is representing a wire carrying a current out of the screen. So if you point your thumb in the direction of the current on your right hand and you curl your fingers on your right hand, the fingers will curl in the direction the magnetic field goes around the wire. What's the strength of that field? Well, it's given by this equation here. B is mu naught i over 2 pi r. This is kind of analogous to E is KQ over R squared. But in this case, it's R, not R squared. Uh, instead of Q, there is an I. And instead of K, there is mu naught over 2 pi. Mu naught is known as the permeability of free space, and that has a value of 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 tesla meters per amp. So if you put mu naught over 2 pi, that boils down to simply 2 times 10 to the minus 7 tesla meters per amp times by I over R, that's your field. Okay, now what we notice here is that magnetic field lines are circular loops centered on the wire, and again the direction is given by the right hand rule. Your thumb on your right hand goes in the direction of the current, out of the screen in this case. The fingers, when you curl them, show the field direction, shows which way the field curls around the wire. Now, just like two charges can exert forces on one another, two wires can exert forces on one another too. But in this case, opposites repel and likes attract. In other words, parallel currents going the same direction attract. Now in this picture, we have the red wire, that's red indicating out of the screen, current direction, and the blue wire, that's carrying current into the screen. The field here is, the field is produced by the left hand wire. So you can see that uh, counterclockwise circulating field from that first wire. Okay, so 
the force per unit length on wire 2, the blue one, by wire 1, the red one, is simply I2 times B1. So it's the current in wire 2 multiplied by the field from wire 1. Now, of course, the field from wire 1 is given by mu naught I1 over 2 pi r. So if you put that together with the first equation, then we get force per unit length is mu naught over 2 pi I1 I2 over r. This is a lot like k q1 q2 over r squared. Okay, but again, it's r instead of r squared, and instead of q's, you've got i's. Instead of k, you've got mu naught over 2 pi. Okay, so note that here we can do the right-hand rule again to find the force direction. So if you look at the left-hand, sorry, the right-hand wire, the field that it experiences from the left-hand wire at the point where the right-hand wire is is directed up. So we put our uh, fingers in the direction of the current that's into the screen, palm points up, and you should have your thumb pointing to the right. That's the force that that wire feels because the other wire, and of course, if that's repelled from the first wire, the first wire is repelled away from the second wire. Okay. So, and one thing to keep in mind is, again, we use long straight current current wires similar to the way we use point charges for electric fields, so we ask about the net magnetic field at a particular point or the net force one wire feels because of the other wires. Okay, so these are actually cross, that's a cross-sectional picture, a slice through a set of four wires carrying current either into or out of the screen, uh, but we treat them much the same way we treat point charges. Okay, so that's a good overview of wires and how they create magnetic fields and the forces on them. That's the end for today.